So the other very useful way to get to alcohols is by the reduction of carbonyl compounds. Okay. Reduction of carbonyls. Okay, and uh, we're going to be getting into the chemistry of carbonyls um, very shortly uh, in this class. Uh, but for now, we can talk about just some of these simple transformations uh, that we're going to be talking about. Um, and so the, the overall sort of general uh, idea here is that we're going to take some, some carbonyl, okay, and we're going to add a, a hydride, okay. Um, and uh, so this is going to formally be H minus. Um, you don't you don't ever just have H minus floating around though. That's not going to be a, a very stable situation. So it's always uh, formally H minus. So it's an H attached to something that's willing to give up hydrogen with electrons. Um, and so oftentimes what we'll do is is actually just sort of indicate that this is a hydride equivalent. Um, so we put H minus in the brackets. Uh, and so overall, what what we're going to do um, is to add that H minus to the carbonyl. And then after we work this up with, with acid, um, we protonate the O minus. And so we get the, the overall addition of what looks like um, a, a molecule of H2 uh, across that CO double bond. So that's formally what's happening. Um, although that's not typically how we, we go about doing this. So we, we don't uh, typically do a hydrogenation, um, although in some cases that is certainly possible. Okay, so how are we gonna accomplish this? Um, well, uh, first of all, we need to split up our carbonyls into two categories. So the first category is going to be ketones and aldehydes. Okay, so that's an aldehyde, that's a ketone. The aldehyde just has one hydrogen substituent, one organic, um, and uh, the ketone has two organics. Um, so that's one category. And then the other category is going to be um, any uh, derivative of a carboxylic acid. Um, so it's going to be a carbonyl with, with then some sort of um, hetero uh, atom substituent. So that could be a, an oxygen or a nitrogen or what have you. Okay, so we're going to split those up into two uh, different categories, which you'll come to understand they, they um, sort of do different types of things. Okay, so let's start with the first category, um, the ketones and aldehydes. <clears throat> okay, so the most common um, reagent uh, at least on a laboratory scale, um, for, for reducing uh, aldehydes and ketones. So for reducing um, aldehydes or ketones is sodium borohydride, okay? Uh, and so this is, uh, I think you encountered this last semester, but let's just remind ourselves, um, this is a boron atom that has four hydrogen substituents. Remember, boron only wants three substituents, so if it has four, um, it's going to be an anion. And then the counter ion here is, is just simply sodium. So uh, this is sodium borohydride, and, and uh, as an anion, this is uh, pretty willing to give up one of these substituents, and so that's what makes it a hydride donor, okay? So sodium borohydride is um, a very great reagent, uh, works, works really well, um, will reduce most aldehydes and ketones unless there's something you know particularly hindered about them uh, but just to give you one example um, so I can reduce um, butanol here with sodium borohydride and then um, I'm always just going to work this up with some aqueous acid so that I get a neutral product out at the end of the day um, and this will just simply give me butanol okay so it's just that simple so we convert an aldehyde uh, we reduce it with sodium borohydride and get to the alcohol um, I can also do this with ketones. Um, so let me just pick cyclohexanone. Um, and I'm going to do the exact same conditions here. So I'll just write um, this parentheses, right? Exact same conditions. And uh, when it's all said and done, what I get out of this is cyclohexanol. Okay, so it's just that simple. I will point out, uh, we're about to talk about some much more reactive uh, reducing agents. Um, sodium borohydride is relatively mild, um, uh, but uh, so keep in mind that aldehydes and ketones will also be reduced um, by more reactive uh, hydride donors, okay? Also reduced. Reactive. Hydride donors. Uh, and so the ones that we're going to talk about uh, are lithium aluminum hydride um, and something called dibol, okay? 
Um, so both of those, these are more reactive than sodium borohydride. These will certainly also reduce aldehydes and ketones. So I just want you to keep that in mind that later on, if you're trying to reduce uh, an ester in a molecule, but there's also a ketone, um, you can get selectivity for the ketone uh, with sodium borohydride. That won't reduce the ester. But if you have something that's reactive enough to reduce the ester, that ketone is going down, okay? It will also get reduced um, by these more reactive reagents. So, so keep that in mind. Okay, uh, so that's the aldehydes and ketones. Um, that's great. What about reducing um, a, something like a ester? So a carboxylic ester. Okay, so I already tipped my hand and told you that there are you're gonna need something more uh, reactive to, to make this happen. So um, let's say that I have um, this simple ester here, simple methyl ester. Um, again, sodium borohydride is not typically reactive enough to reduce an ester. And so what we're gonna want is um, you know, some bigger artillery here uh, to, to take this down. So lithium aluminum hydride or dibol, and I'll, I'll show you what those are in just a second. And that will absolutely reduce down the ester uh, to all the way to the alcohol, okay? Um, I wanna point out here that there is a byproduct, um, which is the alcohol portion of the ester, okay? So in this case, the alcohol portion is methanol because that was a, a methyl ester, okay? So with an ester reduction, there's always the two components. Okay, there's the, the carbonyl portion, which can go down to the alcohol, and then there's the sort of the, the uh, alkoxy portion of the ester, which then gets spit off as an, as an alcohol. Um, and I point that out because you, you sort of need to keep that in mind. So here, here's a good illustration of this. If my ester is cyclic, which we'll come to understand is called a lactone, but uh, just think of it as a cyclic ester. If I reduce this, compound, right, I, I will certainly convert my carbonyl into an alcohol, but see what happens with the other piece, that's also an alcohol, okay? So the reduction of an ester generates two alcohols, okay? One from the carbonyl and one from the alkoxy piece. So keep that in mind. Okay, well, how does this work? Um, you know, this actually kind of bleeds into our, our uh, our unit on uh, car carboxylic acid derivatives, um, but it, th in this case, is really not much to understand, uh, to be honest. So, uh, and we're going to talk about this uh, a little bit schematically. Um, but basically, if we have uh, a reagent that's reactive enough to donate a hydride, um, what we can think about this doing um, is is basically just as if it was free hydride. I already told you that there is no free hydride. Um, but that's okay. Mechanistically, we can think about um, the H with its electron pairs um, adding to that carbonyl. So you're going to push the electrons up. You will get to this type of intermediate, okay, where we've just added the hydride. So you can see that's gone from sp2 to sp3. And now uh, what can happen is that the electrons that we just pushed up onto that oxygen, right, there's three electron pairs there. Those can actually just spit back down and now kick off that, whatever that group is there, in this case, a methoxide, okay? And so that's what we get there and we just spit off our methoxide. But now look what we did. We converted the ester into the aldehyde, but we already talked about aldehydes are much more reactive to uh, reducing agents than esters, okay? And so what's gonna happen then is uh, you won't be able to stop this um, under normal circumstances, um, and this is going to get reduced further than to the alcohol. So you another hydride, and then you work it up with proton, and you get the alcohol out, okay? So it's just simply two um, hydride reductions. Right, so there we go, uh, the same in, and then you protonate, and you get the alcohol, okay? So that's, that's basically what we're dealing with with the reduction of an ester, okay? I will point out to you, um, that this mechanism requires two equivalents um, of, of the reducing agent, okay? And so that is important, okay? Let, uh, let me, however, tell you what uh, 
what in the world is Dibol? Okay, again, I told you organic chemists love their abbreviations. What in the heck is Dibol? This is diisobutyl aluminum hydride. Okay, and so the key point here is that there's an aluminum hydride. Right, that's kind of the business end of this reagent, and that's that's the hydride that we're donating. Um, and then the aluminum has two organic substituents on it. Okay, they're isobutyl groups, so diisobutyl aluminum hydride, and that's a really good donor of that that hydride. Okay, um, you'll note though that Dibol only is donating one H minus. Okay, now lithium aluminum hydride. Uh, this is I, I talked about the bazooka of desilating agents uh, in a previous video. L lithium aluminum hydride is the bazooka of reducing agents. Okay, uh, there is little that will withstand the reducing power of lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, and this is uh, just a, a just a more potent um, aluminum-based uh, hydride reagent. So you, you'll notice it kind of looks actually a lot like sodium borohydride. Boron and aluminum are in the same. Uh, column there. Uh, and so we've got we got four substituents on aluminum that makes it, it an anion and now we've got the lithium cation uh, for this. And the lithium cation is actually important um, for reasons that we'll talk about. Okay. So uh, the, the thing to keep in mind with lithium aluminum hydride is that we've actually got four uh, equivalents of, of the hydride that we can use. So, so here um, you know, one equivalent of lithium aluminum hydride gives you four equivalents of hydride power, right? So we usually don't need an excess um, uh, in general, with, as with, whereas with Dibol, we need at least two equivalents to reduce an ester, okay? Okay, so we can reduce esters now. Um, what, about, what about carboxylic acids? That's an interesting one, carboxylic acids. Okay, so acids are funny, right? Because um, they, they, in general, uh, they're, uh, they're acidic, okay? So if we throw a strong nucleophile like a, a hydride or a Grignard reagent or something, um, rather than reacting with the carbonyl, we, we usually just um, will deprotonate. If, if the nucleophile is basic enough, all we'll do is, is deprotonate, we'll get to the carboxylate um, and, and to the protonated nucleophile, uh, that's neutral, right? Uh, we'll get to this situation, and now as an anion, this is much less prone to nucleophilic attack. So um, a lot of times, if we're trying to, to do nucleophilic chemistry with free carboxylic acids, we won't do the nucleophilic addition step because they are acidic and they protonate the nucleophile, okay? So if we want to reduce a carboxylic acid, how can we do it? Well, all we have to do is use the bazooka, okay? Even this, this thing notwithstanding, uh, lithium aluminum hydride doesn't care. It's going to reduce it anyway. Okay, so lithium aluminum hydride, and then we're going to follow that up with just an acidic workup. That's just the workup step. And so we could reduce benzoic acid here to benzyl alcohol um, without any, any problems. Um, but in this case, only lithium aluminum hydride um, is reactive enough. Okay, so let's talk about that very quickly. Why does that work with lithium aluminum hydride? Well, so the first thing that happens is exactly what I said. Okay, you, uh, if you throw a hydride reagent um, like uh, lithium aluminum hydride um, at, the, uh, at a carboxylic acid, you are going to do acid-base chemistry, right? So you're going to deprotonate that for sure. And you're going to get to the lithium salt of the carboxylic acid, right? So we will have lost H2 gas at that point, okay? Now, as I just said, usually the lithium or the, the carboxylate as an anion is not electrophilic enough to undergo an attack by a nucleophile. Um, but in the case the lithium is actually crucial here because lithium um, is, it's certainly a metal, um, but it's actually a pretty strong, tightly binding metal, right? So it, it really grabs onto uh, oxygen in this case. And 
it's somewhere between an ionic bond um, and a covalent bond, right? So it's not as covalent, say, as an oxygen carbon bond would be in an ester, um, but it's not as ionic as a as the carboxylate sodium situation would be, right? So that lithium is actually uh, covalently bonded, let's say, um, to to the oxygen. Okay, so this actually makes this thing feel um, more like an ester than than just a free carboxylate, and that's important because now we can have we'll have some some aluminum hydride species and you know keep in mind that this might not be ALH4 all the way through as we're donating hydrides we're we're losing hydrides but they're still reactive so i'm just going to draw it draw it in this way um, and there will be some some other uh, ligands on the aluminum right uh, but now now because of the lithium oxygen um, situation this is now still prone to undergo um, a, an additional hydride uh, attack, right? And so the cation here is, is lithium still. So um, we get to the situation now where we have added, right? We're gonna, we're gonna have our counter ion to that oxygen also be lithium, okay? Um, and so we just added our, our hydride equivalent. Both oxygens are stabilized by lithium, so that's good. Um, um, but basically now what we're going to do is, is kick out um, this O lithium species, okay? It looks, looks just like um, what happened with the ester. But in this case, we're losing, um, you know, our O, o lithium, um, you know, and I guess, I guess presumably what's happening here is that you've got some, uh, you know, uh, you know, polycoordinated oxygen with a bunch of lithiums. Um, this might end up being... You know, uh, an aggregate. Um, it's probably not O L I two <laughs> just floating around, but you know, uh, at uh, formally, what's happening is that's being spit off as the leaving group. And now you can see again we've accessed the aldehyde, and so the rest is um, as we've seen before. We've got plenty of hydride reducing power to get that all the way down to the alcohol. Okay, after after we work it up with acid. So that's key: lithium aluminum hydride. Um, the aluminum hydride part is definitely packs a strong punch, but the lithium part is actually um, playing the crucial role. Um, and the evidence here is that if you use sodium aluminum hydride, you don't see reduction of the carboxylic acid or it's, or it's uh, massively slower than in the lithium case. So that tells you the lithium is actually absolutely crucial there. Okay, so that's, that's reduction of the uh, carboxylates. 